All right. So we're in the thick of this pandemic. You know, Dr. Anthony Fauci says it's nowhere near being over. And so we're seeing several states rolling back the reopening plans. So how should small business owners in, let's say, Texas or California respond to these back and forth changes? Well, I'll tell you how they are responding. Initially, they're discouraged. Uh, and who wouldn't be? Uh, they thought they had hit the finish line, somehow made made it through uh, against all odds. And now they've pushed forward. And now they're being told they have to close up again. No, it's not a pretty picture at all. I think this is the time when uh, people are going to struggle with getting their head in the right place. And most of the battle is going to be won in the head more than on the street. Uh, because what you have to do as an entrepreneur is realize that somewhere in this craziness, there's an upside. And I can tell you what the upside is coming through any bad time, because I've come through a lot of them. It's the best time to move your business ahead if you could stay in the game. And I don't just mean stay in the game, like making your dollar stretch and being able to pay the bills you must pay. That's part of building a business. It's a skill you need. But I'm talking about staying in the game mentally where you really believe there's gold at the end of this rainbow. And the goal that really is at the end of every tough time is there's less competition. Uh, there's more people not spending money, throwing money at the problem. You can pull ahead. You can be a big player if you can try enough new ideas, because the great thing, well, I shouldn't say great. I'm over, I'm overstating it perhaps, but the one big benefit of a really tough time that lasts is when you come through with it, you know you can survive anything. And there's no replacement building a business and having self-confidence. A lot of people like to think they get their self-confidence in business through success. It's just not the way it is. You get your confidence in business knowing that you came through and you're still alive. And that's exactly what the reward's going to be if these people could stay with the program and keep trying new things, keep trying new things as best they can, get educated, learn a new skill, see what else they could offer when they open, see what the customer really wants, see what assurances the customer is going to want to come back in your doors. All of these things have to be addressed in a, in a problem-solving, eager kind of way because that's what keeps you moving toward the next new finish line, whatever that's going to be. Is there any type of decision or choice that they can make that won't be a good one at this time? Something that you'd say, definitely don't do this. Uh -huh. Borrowing money to stay afloat. It's like uh, borrowing money with, without having any idea of your ability to pay it back. And a lot of people are doing that. They think, well, I'm already in hock. I might as well lay another layer of money on it. No, it doesn't really work that way. It's uh, your most assured way of going out of business. The other, if I could mention one more that I constantly see uh, business, young businessmen and women uh, repeating again and again, is keeping staff on when they don't have the talent set that's going to be needed in the new economy. Um, anyone who's smart in business today is looking at this staff one-on-one -on -one and not only laying off staff as need as the need surfaces, but asking, is this the right person going forward for my business or will I need some of the skill set? And they're either educating the people that are with them or they're looking for new talent. And I think you're going to see a bellwether change in the number of people that think they're going back to work when things open that aren't going to be invited back because I think it's given business owners a lot of time to pause and think, what do I need going forward? And it's not always the old employees that you had without the skills needed to go forward. Now, I want to talk about a specific group of business owners uh, because some experts are calling this recession a she mm -hmm. session. And they're saying that as we learn, you know, a little bit more about the fallout oh. from the pandemic, you know, it's significantly reduced working moms hours and pay. So what is your advice right now to moms uh, working during this time? Well, the moms are carrying uh, much more weight than the guys are. I, I, maybe I'm not right in saying that. But the reason I feel that way is because we've had homeschooling. Uh, many of the working moms have young children at home that have to be attended to. So they're in charge of the home front 24-7. Uh, they're in charge of their working within the office, whether they have a remainder of a job or not. And they're in charge of the kids. So these are the people that are going to pay the biggest price because they're not in the position to be out job hunting because they're too busy. They're not in the position to improve their work skills, get a new talent, learn a new talent that's going to position them better for the future of finding a job. They're kind of stuck. And for those moms, 
I would suggest you barter with other moms that you're close to and perhaps have a child exchange or work out some kind of a bartering thing and a support system. So as Moms United, you could search for other positions and teach yourself the job skills at home while you have the time, if you could make the time to push yourself ahead in the new economy that's going to emerge, needing entirely new skill sets that the moms at home are not going to have. They've got it the worst. I must say it's going to take a a big heart and a tremendous effort, but also mutual support with other women in the same position to push ahead. Now, I know you've got more advice on how businesses can get through this pandemic with your small business recovery webinar series. Uh, what can business owners anticipate from it? They're going to go home with a blueprint on how to succeed at their own business. I'm hoping to accomplish two things with the help of AT&T business. One, give them the technology needs that they really need, uh, will specifically need to build tomorrow's business. It's not a lot, but it's a bellwether change. This has changed everything in technology. And the second thing is I hope they're gonna go home with an attitude adjustment to see this pandemic as really an opportunity if you're willing to put the hard work into it and be creative enough and get enough minds thinking of what else you could try. Um, believe me, with the people that I've collected together to drill into and get their best advice, I'm only inviting in the smartest trailblazers in each industry to share their very guarded advice. I'll get it out of them. And so that everybody can go home knowing they have a plan in hand. I'll try that. I'll try that. I'll try that. So they buy a little time and push forward in their own business. My last question for you, with everything going on, where is your yep. headspace when it comes to your businesses? Well, I have to tell you, uh, I would like to say positive all the time, but there's not a single soul that's coming through this pandemic who feels like every day is a great day. And I'm the most positive person I know. I think what I've learned to do for myself and I encourage other people to do is to avoid going to your worst self. And whenever your, uh, your routine is broken, whenever you don't get the usual support system, seeing your friends, too much of your family, or you're too much of your husband alone is enough to finish me off. But whenever you're going through a period like that, you tend to go to your biggest insecurities. You tend to think, oh, what if this happens? You tend to go to the what's the worst that could happen and what's my inability versus my ability. No, I think today is a day where you have to sit down and make a long list of what your talents are. And then you have to ask yourself, how could I capitalize on it and stay focused on that? Because a pandemic, a long, hard time without a finish line is apt to put the best of us down. But I think you just have to say, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go to my best self. And what is my best self and keep it front and center. And that's what you keep doing again and again, because that's what gets everybody through their best selves. But this is a time where you're tempted to be a worse self. Uh, just be hard on yourself. Not a good way to go. You got to stay away from it like it's the real poison versus the pandemic. Shark Tank's Barbara Corcoran, thank you so much for joining us and for your insight. My pleasure. Thank you so much.